Alright guys, emergency broadcast, I had to record this video instead of my regular one because it looks like that Zelensky either already made or about to make the biggest mistake possible. And as a, one of the results of this, the situation in Avdivka is already critical. At the same time, the US is changing the way it wants to support Ukraine. Russians are bringing thousands of armored military vehicles to the east of Ukraine and Putin also decided to switch the strategy. But more about all of this in just a couple of minutes. What's up investors? It's the Russian dude. For obvious reasons, guys, there is not going to be a ridiculous Russian propaganda today, but let's begin this uh, semi-special episode with at least some good news from the South. And first of all, right here, if you remember, last week there was a big attack against Belbek airfield located to the north of Sevastopol, and you also remember that an extremely high-ranking Russian military official, Lieutenant General, was also eliminated. And so right here we do have finally confirmation from the satellite images showing the total destruction of the command post. Next there is another relatively good news from the Barozhia frontline from Robotnia, where recently President Zelensky visited the front line as you can see from this video, and this is only less than one kilometer away from the actual combat activities. This was a very big grand gesture by President Zelensky. But unfortunately, not all of his recent decisions are as good. And we'll talk about this more about this one soon. And ultimately, we make a stop in Krynki, where Russians continue to try to push Ra Ukrainians away from this settlement and bring them back to the other side of Kherson region. But Ukrainians are still repelling this attack and they're still holding a pretty confident foothold in this side of Dnipro river. And one more good news is that guys, it looks like that you do like it when I call your names, you even some of you ask to do it down below in the comments. So I decided to go through one big and extensive list of male and female names and ask for your simple likes and subscribes. So Aiden, Araf, Aaron, Aaron, Abdil and Abdullah. Welcome, thanks so much for watching. If you guys can subscribe to my channel, this will be greatly appreciated. And if you have not heard your name yet, feel free and subscribe as well, because eventually I will call your name as well. You can also follow me on Instagram to see how I live outside of YouTube, the link is down below. And so yes, it is time for serious uh, stuff. Now guys, let's talk about the situation in the east of Ukraine and the critical situation in Avdiivka. How Russians are adjusting their military strategies and what kind of this critical mistake that Zelensky is about to make or already made. But first of all, according to the report by the Institute for the Study of War, Ukrainians were able to recapture some territories in the woods of Klishivka away from Russians. Another good news from the East. And in the last 24 hours, they were able to repel a total of eight different assaults of Russians against Bogdanivka, Klishivka and Ivanovsky destroying a significant number of Russian military vehicles. Then we have this first-person footage from Andreevka, where a Ukrainian soldier records combat activities on his GoPro and then compiled this in one big and long documentary. And I decided to share it with you guys completely for free. It will be on my Patreon, the link is down below. As we go to the south, closer to Avdivka frontline, Ukrainians were able to reportedly destroy a Russian T-80 tank along with the assault group located to the west of Novoselivka Druha. And then in Vodyane, Ukrainians were able to destroy three more armored vehicles of Russians. And speaking about Vodyane, right here is the compilation of destroyed Russian armored vehicles from back in the days, which they lost trying to capture this city. The losses are truly absolutely unbelievable how much they can lose with such insignificant attacks. Specifically, they lost in one day nine tanks, 12 infantry fighting vehicles and at least 50 plus Russian soldiers were either eliminated or heavily injured. Even more to the south in Nova Mikhailivka, where Russians also tried to advance and capture this settlement, but they looks like have absolutely no idea what they are doing. Because even their own tank drivers, they cannot share the road properly and they get into accidents for absolutely no reason. So obviously whenever Ukrainians they stopped laughing after seeing this and they started attacking them. The entire military convoy of Russians was eliminated, they started to run away, but Ukrainians did not let them do it. 
I mean, I honestly had to ask myself, did those tank drivers did not see each other, or were their egos so big that they did not want to let other guy to take the road? Whatever reason happened, it did happen. I would just want you guys to see the video for yourself and let me know what do you think. The full version along with all the other hundreds of photos and videos weekly will be available on my Patreon and guys please take advantage right now there is a discount going on. The link to my Patreon once again is down below, thank you so much. But as we go back to Avdivka, right here we have a very interesting, I would say, footage of just a few Russian soldiers going across the open field and they keep a very big distance between each other. They are still being targeted by Ukrainians, but only one soldier gets injured. This is a part of a new Russian tactic which we will be talking about very soon. And reportedly, overall in the last 24 hours across the entire front line, both from the east and the south, Ukrainians were able to destroy or heavily damage at least 100 Russian military vehicles and pieces of equipment. This is a massive number. And unfortunately, as we go to another settlement called Vuglidar, we can see truly devastating pictures. Because the local residents, not all of them, but some of them, they still live there. It is hard to call this living, but they do not want to abandon their childhood places. So they have to live pretty much under constant fighting between Russians and Ukrainians. And unfortunately, as we go back once again to Avdivka, right now the situation there is getting very critical, because Russians were able to advance to the north west of this settlement, as you can see from this map, which shows the changes in territorial control. And reportedly they were able to advance significantly in this quarry, located to the northwest of the settlement and occupies some several blocks getting closer to the settlement itself. And right now one of the major roads that Ukrainians are using to bring back and forth reinforcements and supplies and also where their artillery positions are located. Right now they are already in the firing range for the Russian army. This happened because of never-ending meat assaults by Russians. And also recently there was a pretty cloudy weather, there was very low clouds reportedly, so Ukrainians were not able to do their drone reconnaissance that effectively as they did in the past. And using this, taking this into the advantage, Russians were able to advance a little bit. The situation once again is critical, but it is not yet fully devastating. But nevertheless, Russians did decide to adjust their military strategy accordingly, so let's talk about this right now, before we can talk about this potentially critical mistake that Zelensky is about to make. And so yes, in order to understand the new strategy by Russians, we have to go a little bit in the past, just no more than one, two months. Approximately in the beginning of December, it was starting to be mentioned in the Western media that the Western partners are not longer that confident in the ability of Ukraine to launch counter-offensive effective one in the upcoming year. And partially because of this, even America started to focus in providing support to Ukraine, which is not to help Ukraine do the counter-offensive, but to at least keep the existing territories and not to let Russians advance even further. Basically what I'm talking about here is that Ukrainians started to be on more defensive mode, at least according to the West. And at the same time, Western partners, they were seeing that Russia literally put its economy on military tracks and obviously increased the production of military related items, vehicles, weapons, munitions, everything. Which is something that the West will not feel comfortable matching this level of production. Such as, for example, reportedly since the beginning of the invasion, the production of Russian tanks increased by 560%, infantry fighting vehicles by 360%, and armor personnel carriers by 350%, more than 3 to 5 times the production before the war. And as a result of this is pretty much exactly what we see right now in the east, is that Russians right now are in the offensive and they take land, but also more recently hundreds of other armored vehicles and tanks 
were spotted assembling to the east of Kupiansk and also thousands of Russian soldiers started to get closer to this front line as well. There has also been recorded a significant increase in the artillery fire from Russians along Kupiansk Liman front line, which is pretty much this area. Reportedly, right now it is approximately anywhere between seven to eight hundred attacks from the artillery every single day. And even Zelensky himself did mention previously that right now it is a stalemate in this war and partially the reason why it is because of such long delivery times which the West took to provide support to Ukraine. I'm not personally complaining, I'm thankful for the West sending this support, I'm just quoting Zelensky here. And that's why Zelensky also mentions that Russians can break through the Ukrainian defenses and they will not stop here, they will continue advancing through the Ukrainian territory and then even threaten NATO countries. The Western media as well, including the New York Times, mentions that it is not enough people right now that Ukraine has along the eastern specifically front lines, so there is no even talking about the counteroffensive at this point, they only will be very lucky to keep their ex existing positions. And yes, Ukraine is extremely short on the munition, including the artillery shells, that is why they no longer can target small groups of Russians, and this is exactly the strategy adaptation I was talking about previously, that right now Russians, if you also remember video from Avdiivka, are no longer traveling together in the group of 15-20 people all next to each other. They travel maybe in groups of 5-6 people or even less than that and they try to keep distance because this let's also economically does not make sense for Ukraine to waste the entire artillery attack on one soldier. And this is also including some unusual methods that Russians are using, such as for example using the underground passages under Avdivka. we've been talking about several times in my previous videos. And long story short, the goal for Putin right now at this stage of the war is to gain the initiative, to push Ukraine as hard as possible so the West will see that Ukraine starts to lose and they will start pushing Ukraine towards negotiations. This is the main hope for Putin. This is just me once again giving you guys his opinion, his assumptions. And unfortunately, Zelensky might about to make or already made a critical mistake which unfortunately in the worst case scenario can help Putin. And this is what we're talking about, is something you already heard about, is his decision to retire Valery Zaluzhny, the commander of chief of Ukrainian forces. The official, official resignation of Zaluzhny is not yet fully made, but Zelensky recently gave an interview to an Italian company where he was saying that yes, he is actively thinking about replacing not just him, Valery Zaluzhny, but the entire or the majority of the military commandment of Ukraine because he wants a fresh look at the situation, just to summarize what he says. And this news even came as a negative news for Ukrainians themselves, because right here you can see the reaction of the biggest telegram channels to this announcement, and these are Ukrainian channels. As you can see, there is predominantly negative reaction, because Ukrainians, they do think that Valery Zaluzhny is a good military commander, he did extremely good things for his country, he was successful, and it is not his fault that Ukraine right now is in this situation, he is only using the resources he has at his disposal, and once again he cannot simply get out of nowhere tanks, planes, ammunition, weapons, anything like this, he just uses whatever he can to protect to the best of his ability. And despite all the odds, despite all the negativity, he is still able to do it, so whatever he is doing is truly miraculous. And Zelensky deciding to replace him in the middle of this crucial moment when the situation can change any day can be a critical mistake because the new person, whoever he or she is gonna be, she or he might not just pick up where Zaluzhny left. He or she might need some time to get into the situation, to think, to develop a military strategy, to react accordingly. And Russians will know this as well, Putin himself especially. As soon as if there is a replacement, 
this is specifically the very same day or maximum the next day when I think Russians will launch just massive pressure against Ukrainians because there will be this temporarily confusion and chaos within the military commandment. Because, once again, if this transition of the military power within Ukrainian government is not executed perfectly, I would even say flawlessly, if it's absolutely the best transition possible, like if there's some kind of uh, absolutely magic that's gonna happen, in the worst case scenario, this might lead to catastrophic events, and Russians might seize the advantage and tip the scale of war and initiative in their favor, and they will do everything possible to achieve this. And guys, you already know how optimistic I am about the Ukrainian victory. I still believe, I still hope that this is going to happen, because simply bad cannot win over good. But the situation, as you can see, is extremely dangerous, extremely critical right now as we speak, so we just have to be not at least pessimists, but at least realists. And in one way or another, whatever happens, I will keep making those videos. So guys, if you want to see how this war is gonna conclude, once again, please subscribe to my channel. It only takes one click. Thanks so much, patrons, for your support, and see you tomorrow.